Okay, introduction to drop-in, alpha 2. So this is the server running on my desktop. Uh, all that's required for that, here I'll close it out, is that there's a link on your desktop, I am poor server, I'll double click that, it opens this window. That must be running for drop-in to work properly. We can minimize that now, and we can launch drop-in. Once launched, we'll enter our uh, password, the password that is burned onto our hasp key. For me it's this, I'll click connect and we get our drop target on the desktop here. And so there are two menus we need to look at right away. Uh, first of all, we want to know that down here in the system tray, we now have this little icon for drop-in. And if we right click, this is where we would exit the program if we want to exit. This is where we would see what options are available for the program. It's also where we could check for updates to the program. And also uh, is the about menu which just shows us the current version number. So that's where we would exit, right there. And besides that, we have double clicking the globe. We'll open up the retrieving menu. Now the retrieving menu will show all the files we have in the system here when we click retrieving. Of course there's nothing yet, We're, we've begun from an empty system. Zero files are in the system. Clicking retrieving will clear all selections and show all files. So we don't have anything yet because we haven't entered anything yet. So I'll close the retrieving menu and we'll look at the tagging menu by dropping a file onto the globe. So when we have the focus on something else, the, the globe goes out of focus a bit. And when we grab it, it comes back into focus. What I'm going to do now is grab the flowers, this flower thing. I'm going to type in the text box here, flowers. Now that doesn't exist yet, so if I hit enter, it will ask me to put it into a list. And I don't have any lists yet, so I'm going to create one. I'm going to call it plants. So now flowers is in plants, and it's a tag I'm using for chrysanthemum J JPEG. I'm also going to put red in colors and say done. And so now we see that file has disappeared from here. We see the drop has completed over here. And if we double click here on the retrieving menu, we see that file is now presented here. Clicking retrieving shows all files. There is one file and double clicking it will of course open the file. Okay, and so we'll close that and we'll bring another one in, tulips. And we'll say uh, double click flowers so that that's the tag we're going to select for tulips and also put in yellow. Put yellow in colors and say done. Drop is completed and we can do the same for hydrogenous uh, hydrangeas and I'll say white in colors is something I want and I also want to include flowers so I'll double click that. Notice also that when I select flowers red and yellow are showing up because they are tags that I've used with flowers before. So I've got flowers and white selected for hydrangeas and I'll say done and drop is completed so now double clicking the globe will show the retrieving menu we see the three files and we see that if I double click a tag anywhere around here, it becomes a selected tag in the retrieving menu. And if I select that tag, it shows only the things that tag has. Now if I bring another one in by double clicking it, I have flowers in red presented. But by default, we see the union of the two tags. If I want to see an intersection or explicitly only the things that that tag has, I select it. So we show only red. And showing, and showing an intersection is simply a matter of selecting more than one tag in the selected tags area. So if I select flowers and red, of course I get chrysanthemum. Um, the same goes for these filters over here, the drop time when something came in. I can just click to toggle it on or off. And the uh, file extension type is also an uh, optional filter that I can click on or off in order to change the results that I'm seeing. So if I deselect and deselect, of course, we're looking at all the files that are in the system. And that's that. So we'll close that out and we'll do a different type here, a text file, and we'll call this docs in projects, and we'll say it's related to relevance, and we'll put that in something called company, and we'll say done. And now when we double click to see the retrieving menu, if we select the filter text, we'll only see that text file appear, because it's only that file that has the text extension in the system at the moment. Clicking both shows us the union, and allowing only one or the other to show, of course, shows only those files. Now, if, for example, I were to, say, 
uh, flowers and docks by double clicking those into here I would see all of those but if I selected text as a filter of course only that one etc etc the idea in the interface here is that all the tags are being drawn from the same pool so if I do double click one to select it into the selected tags area it's removed from wherever it was being presented if I double click to put it out it goes back to wherever it was so Clicking retrieving will show everything and deselect everything. And that's that. Close that. And all that's left now is other types of drops. So we'll close that, minimize that, I should say, and take a look quickly at what happened in our documents area. In the My Documents folder of Windows, there's a folder called My Drop In folder, which has been created. When we double click and look inside, we see Administrator is the default user of the system, and we can see the tags that we've been entering. We see a special folder called My Drop-In Files and a special folder called Drop Date. In My Drop Files are where the files are actually stored, separated by file extension type. In Drop Date is a folder for each day that we've dropped something in. Today we dropped in these things. So we see a shortcut going to those files so that we can browse in that manner to get to the file if we should so choose. And the tags we've created such as colors are of course also a way that we can get to that file. So the tag system that we've been creating has been generated as a Windows uh, folder structure. So now we'll just do one more thing which is to go on the internet and take a look at how we would just bring something from a web page in should we so desire. I'll click on the news and I'll drop grab a link and drop it on. Now I have to choose whether I want to save it as a link like a favorite in my browser or whether I want to actually cache that web page as a PDF file. So we'll do the first one as a file and so we see a name has been put up here for something that we're bringing in and we'll say it's news. Uh, no, actually we'll say it's Haiti in news and we'll say done. Now that's going to be pulling that web page down and producing a PDF for it. And while that's happening, well, there it is, it's completed. We'll also bring another one, Mad Off, and this one we'll do as a link. And we'll say Mad Off in the news. There we are, Mad Off in news, done. And done. Okay. So those two have been brought in. The only other way that we can bring something is to. Uh, say select some text for example we can select some text and drag it on and it says there's a text drop that's being done or an HTML drop we'll say uh, test one in tests and say done oh actually first we'll go drag some other text text also bring it on to here so we have two things we've dropped text that we've selected and we'll say done. And so that's done. Okay, and we'll go see that. We'll double click and say um, this is the text drop that we did. If we double click to open it. We'll see the two selections of text that I did there. Uh, this is the URL or link that we saved. So that will open up a browser and go to that place. And then there is um, the cached web page that we did uh, and that's a PDF file. And if we look in the folder, uh, the drop folder, we'll see that in drop files there are a few different types of things like HTML drops, internet shortcuts, saved web pages, and drop files that we have so far generated. One more little trick is uh, going to open up Google Earth and I have a place mark put down here for the Atlanta office and there it is the Atlanta office big building here so I'll copy that Oops. Cop copy that and then if I right click on the globe I can paste whatever is on the clipboard as long as it's text 
and that equals text, it's KML text. So dropping currently recognizes KML, so I can say um, Atlanta and states, let's say. And I can choose relevance because that's a relevance office in Atlanta and say done. And now that that's completed, I can close Google Earth. And if I go to the retrieving menu and I click Atlanta, I'll see that KML and I can double click it and Google Earth will bring me there. Uh, the same applies for, say, Google Maps. If we open up Google Maps and say, um, let's see, um, Montreal. So there's Montreal. There's a link over here that we can grab just like any other link. Drop it on, save it as a link, and say Montreal and locations. Done. And now if I close that, that drop is completed. So if I double click to retrieve and say um, Montreal and locations, of course, I could do it this way too. I could just start typing M and see, oh, Montreal. Hit enter, and it's a selected tag. There it is, and if I double click it, the web page will open, and it will bring me to that place in Google Maps. Okay, so uh, the only other thing we need to worry about then is what happens when we messed up on the name of a list. We will right click the list name and say rename. States, uh, let's say the states done it will rename the states states to the states uh, docs could be renamed to documentation um, this uh, long ugly thing here that's the KML link could be um, Atlanta office and so on and so forth. And we'll see too that if we go to the folder, um, the states, the folder is now called the states um, in uh, Google Earth Place Marks, it's now called Atlanta Office. So the things that are in the folder that we've renamed in the interface have been renamed here as well. Uh, the same goes for deletion of them. Uh, and in fact, it's only through the interface that we should delete anything. We shouldn't touch this folder structure except maybe to copy some files out of it um, if we, you know, want to. But otherwise, we should uh, work with the folder structure via the interface uh, and just copy them out if we want something from them. So that is about it for now. Um, hopefully, we'll have a more organized and uh, less hurried video for you to video tutorial for you to follow at some point but for now um, that should suffice and if you have any questions of course get back to us and we will be happy to support you good luck talk soon